Big Daddy. Uh, everybody remembers British wrestling. Uh, I think his name was Shirley Cap Crabtree, I think it was. Um, everybody remembers Big Daddy, giant air stacks from the 70s and the 80s. Um, he, was, he was six foot six and 27 stone. And um, he was from Halifax, so he was very familiar with Paul Sykes. Um, and I think it was back about the late six, about 67, Paul Sykes had been about 23 on a brief time from being out of prison. Um, there used to be a nightclub in, in Wakefield called the Savoy. It was on Horbury Road. And uh, Sykes was going in for weeks and weeks on end, uh, causing just mayhem, as, as Sykes did. Uh, he was going around a lot of clubs in Wakefield, um, and the young Paul was an absolute nightmare completely. Um, even when he got older, he still was that nightmare, but obviously um, the fear factor had gone. But I do know that um, the owners of the Savoy Club not only got not only got Shirley Crabtree, um, I think he was about 16 years older than Paul Sykes, um, but he was um, he was brought in to keep Paul Sykes away from that club. Not only him, but a couple of other um, a couple of other heavies from Wake, uh, not from Wakefield, from Leeds. And uh, this night that they were expecting Sykes to come in, uh, Big Daddy was there in his heavies. I don't know whether Sykes got wind of it, but he never turned up. But um, I do know from from a, a lady who used to work in the club. Um, she basically for weeks and weeks, uh, for, they were just basically expecting Paul Sykes to turn up and, um, big daddy, six foot six, huge guy, you know him, shout easy, easy. <laughs> he, uh, he was waiting in the wings with, uh, a couple of well-known tough guys from Leeds to, uh, to keep Sykesy out. Uh, yeah, that was, that's a, that's a true story. So there wasn't many people, um, back at that time who could have who could have controlled him you know um even if even if paul sykes didn't beat bouncers up he used to he would revel in humiliating them because he not many to be honest not not many people were on his wavelength intellectual um most people couldn't match him in a fist fight but he would take great pleasure um in in letting 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 people know he was every bit higher than you intellectually, physically, uh, and that's just what he did. But um, yeah, the Savoy Club once hired um, Shirley Trab Crabtree for a number of weeks, um, and and then obviously when Paul went back in prison for a, a big sentence, I think it was, I think it was when he got his seven years. Um, he got five years and then he got seven years. Because the interesting fact about Paul Sykes is from the age of 17 to 30, he only actually spent nine months outside prison. Um, so from 17 to nearly, when did he get out? March 77. So he was nearly 31. So he'd done something like 13 and a half years in prison. The only time he had, he had two occasions... <clears throat> Where he was outside of prison. Once was in 1973 when he sparred with um, Joe Fraser when Bugner. Fraser come over here to fight Joe Bugner in 73. Sykes went down to the Thomas A. Beckett gym on the old Kent Road. And uh, Sykes, Sykes was paid a few quid to spar with Smoke and Joe because at the time there wasn't that many big heavyweights about. Sykes was six foot three. Um, just done really, really well in the ABAs, got to the semi finals. Uh, that he got beat by Garfield McEwen from Birmingham. Garfield McEwen went on to win the ABAs. He beat who was it? He beat um, former Sykes opponent Neville Mead. Um, it was a thunderous, murderous puncher as a pro. Um, obviously Paul Sykes beat uh, what was he called Neville Mead. But Garfield McEwen, he was only about twelve stone twelve as well, and Sykes was about fifteen, and he just basically boxed his head off. When he got close to Sykes, he clinched him and uh, beat him on a wide points decision. But um, but yeah, Sykes was flying, and I think that was a per that was a perfect time for him to go pro. But he got knocked back, and um, 
That was when they did the arm robbery in Haverton Hill, which is like in between Middlesbrough and uh, Hartlepool. Um, and how he got caught was he did it in his own car and he had a pair of boxing gloves. <laughs> uh, for as intelligent as Sykes was, that's what got him. But uh, yeah, it's a shame because that would he would have been 26, 27 then. And that would have been a perfect time for him to go pro. Obviously, he come out, went pro when he was... 31, 32-ish, and uh, his prime years were gone by then. But, yeah, that's uh, he went down to spa with Smoke and Joe. Um, done really well, you know. But going back to the two times, it was 73. Uh, sorry, from so when he was sentenced in, when he was 17, so that was 1960, 1963. So... This was the time he was out in 67, which was the time when he had the trouble with Big Daddy. And then he was out for a few months in 73. And that was him until 77. But uh, that's a true story going back to um, Big Daddy, a.k.a. Shirley Crabtree, was hired by Wakefield Club owners to keep Paul Sykes out of the club because he was a complete nuisance. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much for listening to my silly nonsense. Uh, excuse the hairstyle. Excuse the chavy hair. Excuse the chavy jacket. I'm off for a run. I'm on a diet. Um, on a slim fast and all that stuff. So if you don't do a run, right? When you do a run, if you don't put it on social media, the whole exercise is negative. Keep that in mind, right? So, right. God bless, guys. Thank you so much.